Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. This is Wileen Benson, and this is our daily gratitude call. Thank you for joining us today. I had a really awesome um, daily GPS this morning before the gratitude call. Um, it's the first thing that I do in the morning. GPS stands for gratitude, prayer, and scripture. There's actually seven steps in this daily GPS, and if you don't know what that is, you can reach out to me um, on my website or on our Facebook group. Um, Breakthrough with Gratitude, and you can ask about the daily GPS, and I'll send you a video and a PDF of the steps so that you can understand how to do that. It's something that I encourage everybody to do every single day. It's just an opportunity beyond the gratitude call. So the G, gratitude, we do that on the gratitude call, and there's a couple of other steps that we do, like the permission process and um, you know some of those things so you're, uh, you do get uh, kind of get a head start, <laughs> I guess, or a finish, finish up um, with the gratitude call. But I do my daily my uh, daily GPS every morning before we get on the gratitude call, and this gratitude call just really adds to what I um, do. So you can do either, you know, before or after, but it's um, it's a great addition. Um, the gratitude call is a great addition to your daily daily GPS. And um, I just want to share with you um, some little tidbits. And some of these are just like ponderings that I'm open for God to give me a little bit more instruction on. I have some questions that didn't get answered today, but I'm complete and content with what I did get, and I know that they're going to be added to. So these seeds are planted in my heart, and I'm just waiting for them to grow. Um, But one of the things that was super profound today as I was thinking about how our words create what we, you know, the outcome. If we speak and we think and, um, you know, focus on really positive things, then um, we're going to get positive results. If we think and focus on and put emotion behind negative things, then we're going to get those things too. So it's important the words that we speak. And I was reading in Isaiah, let me see if I can, I think it was like 44, 24. I'm pretty sure. Let me just double check. I can give you, yeah, Isaiah 44, 24 was the scripture that I was led to today. And it says that um, uh, the Lord, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, created everything and it says something like I did it all by myself I did it alone I did it myself and that reading that scripture today gave me a whole new perspective into the words that we speak and how we create and again you know this is just a thought that came to me and I just kind of elaborated on it um, in my own you know just wrote the things that come to came to me but I, I'm not, it's not a complete picture yet, but I envisioned that when we speak words of light and life, because though that is the, um, the cause Christ is the source of all light and he is the source of life, anything that is good or beautiful or, you know, all of those things come from him. And then there's another source, um, Satan is... Uh, the source of all darkness and destruction. And I thought, um, and so the thought came to me that if Christ is the creator and he's the advocate to the Father, and, and we, um, you know, we pray to the Father, but Christ is, is our advocate, that when we are asking for things that are based in light and truth and life, growth, all of these wonderful things, then we are in partnership with Jesus Christ. And if he is the creator, then we're giving our, um, we're turning that over to him to be the advocate for us to create it. 
And then if we are asking for things that are based in fear, like I've actually been praying for something that has been based in fear, praying for um, something personal that is based in, like, worry and doubt and fear. And uh, he has, Christ can't be where there is fear and darkness. And so... I'm not in partnership with Christ when I am praying for or asking for, you know, on my vision board or, you know, whatever. If I'm asking for things that are in that dark energy, then I'm in partnership with the author of all darkness and destruction. And Christ can't be there. So basically if I'm in fear and anxiety and I'm trying to create something from that space, I am totally cutting Christ out. He can't be my advocate and help me to create because he can't be in those that kind of energy. And I'm actually in partnership with Satan, and he gets to have his way with me. And that was just such a profound knowledge that it's not just, you know, because before I had looked at myself, I'm the one who's creating this. If I speak something light and true, then then I'm the one who's creating something light and true. If I speak, you know, negative words or words that are based in fear, then I'm creating my future. But that, you know, from what I learned today in my daily GPS, that's not true. I'm I am creating in partnership with one of these either light or dark forces. And um, that just added a whole new perspective to um, helping me really be motivated to always be in a space of light and truth and gratitude and love because I always want to include Christ in every creation that I have. So I had to give you that. I wanted to give you that background, even though it's not complete, you know, and this is just like a new concept for me. Um, But I wanted to share that with you because Mary, before we started the recording, said that she was um, grateful for um, feeling significant and loved, that Heavenly Father is there for her and that she's feeling loved and significant. And I thought, wow, that really is what I'm feeling as with Christ as my advocate, um, that when I ask for things that are light and truth, he's like, I I just envision him immediately, yes, this is good, I'm going to go, you know, help you create that. And so I just want to focus on gratitude for my own significance, for my significance, um, maybe even in the eyes of Christ. I'm going to add that. Um... Gratitude for my significance in the eyes of Christ. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So um, whether it's something I shared previously or just be open to receive whatever is specifically for you, this is what I, um, I feel very significant when I think of Christ as my advocate. And I'm, I wanted to share that and kind of get that off my plate so that now I can be open to receive what's next. And so we're going to um, set a timer for a minute and a half, for 90 seconds. And this during this time, this is your private time to be able to listen for your messages of gratitude for significance in the eyes of Christ. And so just write down whatever comes to you, silent meditation for 90 seconds on gratitude for my significance in the eyes of Christ begin.
um, had a couple things come up for me. Um, I'll see if I can just share both of them really quickly. One of them was my own children um, kind of comparing the human family with Christ and God and the Holy Ghost, you know, kind of being over our human family and then um, how we're so loved each individually. And it just led me to my own children and how I love each of my children. I mean, I love my whole family as a whole, and then I love each one of my children individually. I remember um, my daughters every once in a while would come to me and say, you like so-and-so better (laughs) than you like me. And the fact was that there was one of my children who needed a mom more than the other two did. And so, you know, I was more, like, concentrated on that one, but it was because she needed me more. And so um, my thought was I love each one perfectly, and I, I believe that's what Christ and Heavenly Father does too, is that they love each one of us perfectly. Um, yesterday I also want to share I had a profound experience um, that led me to the new belief my life is perfect, and with the trials that I've had, it makes me feel significant because um, the trials that I've had have been perfect. I am um, I'm so grateful. I'm happy. My life is awesome, and the trials that I've had have um, have brought me exactly where I am right now. And so that to me says that. Um, I am very significant in the eyes of Christ and the eyes of God because I've had the perfect trials that have um, that I've been able to handle, and they've made me who I am. So even my trials help me feel significant. Who else would like to share? Um, as I was writing, I you know just putting significant. I, I see signs, and we see mm. signs all the time, and I feel like. There was a sign given to the to the two men that were on the the road to Emmaus, and not just receiving the sign, they recognized Christ and they talked about it, and they they acknowledged that He was with them, and He opened the scriptures to them. And sometimes I think I don't really recognize the signs that that him, that the Savior gives me that I am significant. I don't always acknowledge them and act in gratitude for the opening of the scriptures and the understanding that comes to me and how that opens up a whole new realm of possibilities in creation. The signs, the, it, it is creation to see signs. It is creation to recognize the relationship we have with him and the gratitude that we feel because of the signs that he has given us. Recognizing and, yeah, just recognizing and acknowledging and expressing gratitude, I think that makes significance. Beautiful. Thank you. I love that, that you saw the word sign in there. And you're right, you know, if we don't feel significant, if we believe that we're not, we're insignificant, There's no way we can see the signs. You know, we can't look up. We're so looking down and inward that we can't look up and see even just the signs that are in nature that show how significant we are. Thank you. Who else? Well, I'm grateful to be able to trust the Lord um, in his promptings to me, to me, um, his daughter, um, to me that, you know, he, I can give all my faith and trust to, to him. Um, this morning, I uh, the scriptures opened up to me and that um, telling me to always retain in remembrance the greatness of God. And it does go on to say, in your own nothingness, but and his goodness and long suffering toward um, towards me, or it says towards you. But I really got that... Um, you know, I've been able to see how he has a work for me to do and there's significance in that. And that there is, that I need to remember to not be, um, to not be puffed up, to not make it mine, but um, remember that um, I'm significant in him and that 
the work that I have to do is specifically for me to do and that significance in the eyes of Christ is um, that the work I have to do is, is through him. Anyway, so I'm just really grateful for my significance in the eyes of Christ. He sees me as um, there's a purpose for me. I wrote this morning that um, I I don't need approval from anyone but him and that he has a particular work for me to do. And so I'm just really grateful that that's that significance in the eyes of Christ. There's purpose. It's not just me and it's not vanity. It is... Um, there's a, there's a really great scripture that I came across this weekend um, about that. I don't recall what it is at the moment, but it's not vanity, it's labor. And um, so I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not seeking for my own glory. I'm actually doing it uh, as an instrument in his hands. So that makes uh, me significant in his eyes. Beautiful, and you're absolutely right. You know, each one of us has a purpose and a mission and a calling, and um, that is significant. It is, uh, you know, I I have the belief that before we came to Earth, that we made some covenants and some contracts to this is what I promise to do when I when I get there when I get to, you know, to help my brothers and sisters you know, so that we can all come back and be here together. And that is significant. Each one of us has an individual purpose that um, is definitely significant. And I love how you brought trust into this because he, we are significant and our purpose is significant to, um, to Jesus Christ and to our Heavenly Father. And so... And, and they cannot have a negative or a bad intention. So we can definitely trust that, you know, when we're receiving those promptings from that light energy, that we can definitely trust it because we are significant and our purpose is significant. And if I could add, it's, it's a labor of love. Yeah, beautiful. It's, what I keep thinking about as Mary has been talking is unity. Unity is what what um, the purpose, the mission, the calling, loyalty, trust. It all brings unity. It all brings oneness. Awesome. The I love that. Mm-hmm. Too. Thank you. All right. Well, let's go ahead and shift over to our permission process. This has been a really awesome discussion today. I appreciate all the different facets of significance that have been. Um, uncovered and discovered here. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath. And just take a moment and connect with your Savior and with your Heavenly Father. And just invite the Holy Spirit to be in here with us so that we can, that witness of the truth and the witness of Jesus Christ is our Savior. Just invite the whole Godhead to be here with us. And open your mind and heart to really fully see and know the significance that you as the fourth individual being one with Christ, being one with God, through the Holy Ghost, that the four of you together, the significance of this fourth additional piece, you as the fourth. And just write down any thoughts that are coming to you in this um, beautiful mastermind space of these four great and powerful individuals. Any thoughts that might be coming to you of next steps 
importance and significance of your purpose and mission and also feeling the significance of you as an individual as part of this this four-part um, equation. And as you're in this space, I also invite you to be open to know if there are any limiting beliefs that would stop you from feeling your own significance within this four-part equation. What is the limiting belief coming up for you as you consider your significance being one with God and Christ and the Holy Ghost. And as you look at that limiting belief, I invite you to examine the cost of it. If you keep that limiting belief, what effect does it have on your ability to be in alignment? And as you look at that cost, I invite you to make a choice right now to either keep that old limiting belief or to give yourself permission to choose a new one. And if you're ready to choose into some new beliefs, then just say yes. Yes. All right, and then go ahead and choose some new beliefs. What are some new beliefs that will take the place of that old limiting belief and will allow you to fully step in as an equal and unified member of this four-part creation in uh, fulfilling your purpose and mission here on Earth. have a couple minutes to share. Um, my limiting belief um, was that I don't know. Was That was it. I don't know. Um, I feel like I fall short because I don't have the ability to see like God and Jesus Christ and, Holy, and the Holy Ghost see. They, you know, I don't have that overarching, being able to see past, present, future, you know, all the, everything. And um, anyway, so my new beliefs are I am human and I have access to, to the gods. I am one with God. I am divine intelligence at the core. So I know that I have that seed of, great, of um, divinity inside of me. What else would like to share? I, my limiting beliefs were, um, others won't be able to see my, you know, my my equality with Christ or my significance, or they don't trust me, or like I'm not good enough, or I'm not equal to them, or I'm defective, or I'll fall short. You know, those, a lot of stuff. But um, you know, that cost the cost is a weak link. And my new, so my new beliefs are: I am whole and one with Christ. 
um, I am loved, and uh, I took I am I'm I'm a I am divine intelligence at the core. I love that. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, one more share, if you'd like. All right, well, we'll go ahead and I want to end with a final grounding so that we can each know what our next step is. And um, before I do that, I just want to open my calendar up um, to talk with anybody who has had some maybe some new thoughts come up um, in this call and you're not sure what to do with them. Um, if you'd like a little bit more perspective, maybe somebody to bounce some ideas off of, um, I want to open up my calendar and all you have to do is just go to askwileen.com and choose a 15-minute time slot. And I would love to have a conversation with you um, about any thoughts that you might have had in this call and um, to see what new perspective we can discover. So let's go ahead and just take a moment and just do a final grounding. So everybody go ahead and take one last, deep, one more deep breath. Not a last deep breath, <laughs> one more deep breath. and looking over your new beliefs. And just really, um, I'm sure that the new beliefs that you have are very sacred and personal to you. And so I'm going to invite you to look over those new beliefs and just really bring them in. As you breathe in, just bring those words into you and allow them to become part of your soul. Feel the truth of them. Ask for spiritual confirmation right now of the truth of these new beliefs. And as you're experiencing this spiritual confirmation of the truth, you know that you can completely let go of that old limiting belief because they're, they're opposite. Where one exists, the other one cannot exist. So as you're bringing in these new beliefs and just seeing the, the truth at the divine core, the truth of these new beliefs, Allow yourself to see your whole being, not just the core or the soul, just this little tiny seed inside of you, but allow it to become you. Allow it to fill you up. Allow it to be not just the core, but your whole being. Just see as these words go out into every area of your body, every cell, and that this divine spiritual core, this intelligence that exists within each one of us, that it is you. That you show up this way, everybody on the outside sees you, sees this light, divine intelligence that you are, that this is all that you are, is a spirit, spiritual divine intelligence. And your physical form is just an embodiment of that that they 100% match up, that they are completely in alignment, that your spirit and your body are one, inseparably connected, and also one with God and Christ. And as this beautiful, bright, intelligent being, what is the one most important thing that you can do today to really anchor in this idea that you are divine intelligence, that you are one with God, that you have a significant purpose, that you are significant, and that you can be trusted per to perform that purpose. You can be trusted to show up as a divine son or daughter of God in your own perfect way? What is the one most important thing that you can do to express your gratitude for your significance? Thank you all for being on the call today. And um, I invite you to share your thoughts on the Breakthrough with Gratitude page. 
I invite you to, um, if this call has opened up some new avenues of thinking, I invite you to continue your meditation after the call's over and allow um, God to continue to share whatever he has for you today. And um, look forward to our call tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. at Mountain Time. And uh, thank you again for being on the call today. Love you guys. Thank you. Love you. Thanks. Love you too. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.